and welcome to Steph Time. My name is Stephanie and today I'm going to show you how I made this craft case to perfectly hold all of my knitting essentials. If you want to make one for yourself, please keep on watching and let's jump right in. Okie dokie, to start out you're going to need your printed pattern as well as your fabric. I made a couple adjustments to the existing pattern in order to accommodate my knitting needles. Uh, I have a full knitting needle set and this just didn't have quite enough spaces for them. As you can see here, this just didn't have quite as much space and this large pocket was just kind of a catch-all and it has a very small pocket on the front that was basically useless. So I wanted to amend that by making something customizable for what I have. So once I made those adjustments, I took all of the pattern pieces and all of the pocket pieces and laid them on top of each other to make sure that all of my measurements were correct before cutting out fabric. And guess what? It all looks good, so we're cutting out fabric now. This is a wool fabric and it was a little less stiff than I would have liked, so definitely use thicker interfacing or a thicker fabric if you want some sturdiness to your craft case. I used this flannel as my lining fabric and I also used this flannel as my pocket pieces, which was really cool because I got to use up a lot of scraps that I had. So I'm cutting out all of my pocket pieces here and all my lining pieces. All right, and when we have all of our pieces cut out, we are going to make some bias tape as well as interface the main and lining pieces. Definitely use some thicker interfacing here if you want that heft. And then we are going to prep our pocket pieces. We're gonna do this by folding over the top edge and folding it over again and top stitching. We're gonna do this on each pocket piece. And then we're gonna mark all of our little pocket lines based off of the pattern. Again, you can customize this to whatever you need in your craft case. So I amended this a little bit based on what I needed to fit. And I did all my little, my whole knitting needle set here. So I did them all kind of different widths uh, as they sized up. And I'm going to stitch the small pocket piece onto the medium pocket piece. And then I'm going to layer the medium and small on top of the large and stitch down the medium pockets, pockets, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, cool Stitches does a really good job of explaining this in her directions, so definitely check that out. If any of the stitch lines line up for your smaller, medium, or large pocket pieces, you're just gonna wait to stitch that until it's on top of the bigger piece. Making sure to backstitch at the beginning of the stitch so that it doesn't wear down with use. All right, and now I'm going to mark some notches and little markings on my lining piece that I didn't mark previously, including the button placement, the elastic placement, and the pocket placement. Since I amended my pattern just a tad, um, I just had to keep checking this as I went along. But if you're going with the normal pattern piece, you'll totally be fine to just mark exactly where it tells you to and you shouldn't have any issues. All right, I'm laying this on there just to kind of see, check all of my markings and readjust some things. I'm cutting my elastic here and I am placing it where it should go, pinning it down. And then I'm flipping my pocket pieces right sides together with that overlapping the elastic and we're gonna sew down that edge to attach it to that piece, like so. We're gonna take out those pins and then we're gonna fold it back over, give it a good press, and then we're gonna top stitch that down. We're going to make our big pocket stitch as well. Next, we're gonna take our elastic and use all of the pieces that we'd like to fit and kind of mark where we're gonna stitch down to create those kind of little like elastic placeholders for our little bits and bulbs. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of measuring things and making some different size pockets for different things. I would recommend using a Taylor soap here rather than Taylor's chalk because now I need to like wash mine <laughs> before it comes out. But we're basically um, doing a little stitch line here, going back and forth quite a few times, back stitching at both the beginning and the end to make sure this is super sturdy as we 
you know, use it. We don't want it to become, you know, pop any stitches, basically. And that's what that should look like. All right, now let's do our pocket. First, we're going to mark the pocket opening on the front of our pocket lining. And you can either just trace this off of the pattern piece or I measured it. And we're also gonna mark this onto our lining piece. And then we're gonna flip these right sides together, lining up that marking that we just made. Once it's lined up, we are going to stitch along that rectangle that we just drew. We're just gonna stitch a straight line all the way across and then we're gonna snip through it. This is kind of a similar process to doing a welt pocket. You're just gonna snip through the middle and you're gonna do a little V shape towards the corner, ensuring that you don't snip through any of the threads. So you're doing this to make it so that you can flip all of that fabric through the hole to the back side. So we're gonna iron this and then I'm testing out some zippers here. That one was the perfect size, but that one was the perfect color. So I ended up going with the kind of faded blue. So I'm just kind of lining it up underneath and pinning it down all the way around. And we're gonna top stitch that down all the way around. <laughs> but first we're gonna cut off the rest of that zipper. I think this was like a 22 inch zipper. So I just cut through it. So we're top stitching this down, attaching the zipper to the pocket lining basically. All right, we're back stitching at the end. And then we have attached our little pocket. Yay, that's our pocket opening. We're gonna flip this over and then we're gonna attach the pocket lining to I guess the other pocket lining or pocket facing. So I'm just pinning that together. Make sure that whatever pattern you wanna see is on the inside of the pocket. So you'll be doing this right sides together. We're pinning this down and then we're gonna take it to the machine and just sew, sew it together. And this is creating our little pocket bag, which is so cute. I love this. It makes me wanna put about 100 pockets on everything because they're just so cute and useful. For me personally, this was the perfect pocket for me to put some stitch markers. That's what that should look like. How cute. All right, when you flip it over, now we've got a functional pocket. All right, now we're adding our buttons. Since we don't want the buttons to go through both layers on everything, we are doing it now. So I'm adding some like snap buttons, but the pattern calls for magnetic buttons. So, you know, use whatever you got, but I had some snap buttons, so that's what I'm using. That's what that'll look like, so cute. Okay, now right sides together, we are putting both the inside layer and the outside layer, sandwiching them, pinning it all the way around, and then we are going to sew this together with a straight stitch. All right, then we're gonna trim down our seam allowance just a little bit, just to cut off a little bit of those loose threads. And I also cut off the rest of the elastic that was kind of extra hanging off the edge. So here I am sewing down my bias tape. I don't pin it ahead of time. I think that, you know, just lining it up as you go is totally fine. I would just make sure to use a scant seam allowance with your bias tape to make sure that you have enough to fold it over because I decided to trim down the seam allowance afterwards and it kind of messed up the folded corners. So just make sure to use a scant seam allowance. It'll be a lot easier, save you time and heartache. All right, now I am folding the bias tape over and encasing that raw edge with the bias tape. And this turned out so lovely and I really took my time with it. So this is definitely like, make sure you've got enough pins in there so that when you top stitch it down like I'm doing now, you get a really nice even bias binding. We're just gonna sew that all the way around, making sure to do a nice curved rounded edge all right, now we are folding down the top few centimeters and I'm measuring all the way across before pinning it down. And then we're doing a little straight stitch right near the edge so that it kind of stays folded. 
All right, so now I'm just putting all my little accessories and my little things and my little sections. It's looking real cute. I'm putting all of my little, what are those called? Knitting needles into the little pockets and they're so cute. I should have labeled them. I definitely saw some people on Instagram label their little pockets with the needle size and if I were to make another one, I would definitely do that. And I finally got to put my little stitch markers in the little pocket and it was so fun. Also, I realized I have way too many stitch markers. I will never need this many stitch markers. And finally, I'm adding my last little button here. So I'm poking a little hole, sticking the front through, sticking the back through and using my little tools to secure that on there. Once it is secure, we are all done and it's so cute. Check it out. Yay, I hope that you guys make a craft case for yourself. This will definitely change the game when it comes to knitting for me. I have everything in one place. Comment down below and let me know what you plan on making a craft case for. And if you like this video, make sure to like it. And if you wanna to subscribe to see more content like this, please do, I love having you here. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.